have fallen down again tonight In this world it's hard to get it right Trying to make your heart feel like a glove What it needs is love, love, love Alright, welcome to Natural Art Makers. My name is Ronnie Chris and I'm here with the wonderful Emily Francis Harper Beard and she's a fantastic natural artist and uh, we're just gonna chat a little bit. So how you doing Emily? I'm good. Thanks All right Ronnie. well I'm glad to have you here and uh, it's really my pleasure I've known Emily for a pretty good while and always admired her work and I'm glad we can actually talk about it now. Uh, a couple things just real quick kind of start us off. I want you to explain to us uh, here at Natural Art Makers Batik. Batik. Um, Batik is a process that my mother, who's an art teacher, taught in her art classes, and I just kind of um, pursued it further after I graduated from college. It is the process of waxing and dyeing material. Uh, a, lot a lot of times it's done on silk. I use muslin um, mostly because I need a heavier material for the pieces that I create. A lot of times Batik, and why it's done on silk is because it's used for fabrics and clothing and since um, mine are more portraits and landscapes um, stretched out on canvas or on stretch stretchers mm -hmm. um, like a canvas <laughs> that why I choose the heavier fa fabric but anyways um, so I draw the piece out and then add the wax apply the wax and wherever I put the wax on the fabric and then dip it into the dye the wax will resist the dye yeah. in the process Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. So <laughs> okay. it's a constant process of wax here, dye. Take that off, wax here, dye, and it allows you to create the um, images. Yeah. There. I keep the wax on there until the final, um, the black is put on there. And as I'm adding the dye and the wax, and adding um, the wax, the dye seeps into where the wax is, and that's why it causes the crinkle effect to it. So mm -hmm. it kind of becomes its own process. Got it. Process. Its own artist on the. On the muslin, and then once that's all done, I lay it between newsprint and iron it off, and it becomes fabric again. And that, and the wax melts away in between the newsprint. Okay. Um, how did you first get exposed to that process? Yeah, through my mother. Um, I learned how to do batik, and then I was just kind of trial and error after that. You know, I get asked a lot of questions. The more people find out that I do this, they ask me about fabrics or dyes and I'm still learning what works best for me so mm -hmm. I'm not at all a professional um, I like to think that I'm going to continue learning inevitably sure. or in, whatever you can add it just keep growing <laughs> yeah keep growing in that process okay. yeah. learning how to use it uh, yeah. I think that's uh, that's definitely a cool thing about being an artist and, and, and talking to different artists that work in different mediums because as you use it and use it and use it it's like it's like you try to master that medium and you get better and better at it and your ability to manipulate it just grows leaps and bounds. Absolutely. Know? And it's wonderful. And actually a friend of mine wearing a piece, this is her clothing. All right. Um, I would love to be able to learn how to get all the wax out of and there are some places like dry cleaners that will do that for you, but to get it to where she can use it for her clothing line and we can take it back to the um, clothing aspect. Of yes. The, the, the uh, functionality, mm -hmm. bring the functionality back in. Yeah. Very neat. Um, in regards to like making our art, artwork, what subjects um, grab your attention as an artist? Um, I love people because they people. inspire me the most. I'm very, um, the friends, the people that I meet, the friends that I make who move me along in my own journey um, are my strongest inspiration although my husband and I have taken some trips recently that have been equally as inspiring so it's it's um, led me to do more landscapes which normally I've shied away from mm -hmm. okay yeah I noticed one of your newer pieces is a, a, was a couple actually were landscapes mm -hmm. which is really cool to see because I know I've seen a lot of your work and um, you know a lot of the prior work had a lot of people involved so it's neat to see you kind of go in that different direction um, what do you have to say about, or what do you, how do I phrase this? <laughs> um, a lot of times they say, you know, and they used to say this a lot a long time ago, it's like, what do they have to say? 
But what do you have to say with your work and, and in regards to what you're trying to accomplish? Um, I'm just trying to tell my story. Um, be, story. Yeah, it's gonna. It's a journal for me, um, and I'm not doing it for anyone. I'm doing it to kind of document for myself, mm -hmm. probably my children. Um, and when people like it and they want to buy it, they want to hang it on their wall. That's just an added plus. It's an honor, and um, and it helps pay the bills. So. And it helps pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> that that doesn't helps. hurt. So. All right. Um, and I'll edit this part out. Okay. Okay. We're editing this out. We're going to try to speak up a little okay. louder just in case. Yeah. I think it's going to pick up because this is pretty strong, but I want to just make yeah, sure. It's my downfall. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, all right. Um, what other... Now, we both know, and, and, and I think people who are paying attention to the blog know too, that there's lots of artists in Nashville. But uh, what artists, what other artists in Nashville inspire you? Um... I do love Julia Martin's work. I love that she has a, a solid style that when people see her work, they know like, it could just be the colors. It doesn't have to be the piece in, yeah. in a whole. Um, I'm a big fan of Danielle Durr. I think that's how you say her last name. Uh -huh. um, you can check that and edit. We can uh, check that. <laughs> and edit it. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's pull a man in there. Oh, no that's guys. <laughs> no guys. Come to me. A lot of photographers. I like um, John Guider's work and Jack Spencer's as far as photography, photography and the moods yeah. that they set with their images. Perfect. So. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, what is it to you? I mean, what is it like to be a visual artist in Music City? Um, I love the challenge of trying to make art important in Music City, to kind of show that it's just as valid as a song, that, um, that there's art in everything around us, um, from the clothing that we wear, or more than a piece on the wall, mm -hmm. so. Well, that's a really good place to start, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, uh. You know, everybody has a different point in their life where this starts to really captivate them, being an artist or art in general. Like, when do you first realize that you were an artist and that was something that you wanted to go in that direction? Um, honestly, because my mother, and I emphasize that my mom was an art teacher a lot because there are a lot of things that your parents put you into when you're little that you kind of fight. Like, yeah. I kind of wish, I wish she was piano a little, lessons, yeah, I was going to say, skating. I wish she had had made me stick with piano. Yeah. That was actually an example. Of <laughs> but, you know, and she, but since, as far back as I can remember, she had me in some art class. I was, I was either um, over at Centennial Senor, Senor, Senor Park taking a pottery class. I mean, there was always an art class involved. And when I got to where I was in high school and I wanted to make my own choices and I wanted to do drama, I think I wanted to be an actress. And she's like, well, you can do that, but you're still going to take these classes as well. So it kind of wasn't much of a choice, but I'm very thankful that she saw something in me. Yeah. You know, like I had always drew the details and that was very important to her, that I was paying attention and that I, that she, um, that she pushed me to do it. So. Perfect. Okay, um, this is kind of a different question, um, but I think uh, it's important because I personally uh, actually recently got married, and so did Emily, a little less recent than me, but um, how does marriage affect, how has it affected your work or um, your process or any of those things? Oh, yeah. Um, I've got a husband that is just as passionate about supporting the local art scene as I am. He's a great writer. Um, he's got a very unique style to his writing. It's very, I think it's very artistic. And um, and he and I both are moving in the same direction as far as wanting to lift up these incredible artists that are emerging in Nashville. And you know, and of course, he's a huge supporter of mine as well. Sure. So it allows me to. I would hope so. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it allows me to do, um, dedicate more time in less of a manic way. A lot before I m met him, it was a yeah. very manic process, and mm -hmm. I think that that kind of lends yeah. itself to the crazy artist yes. thing. So I can actually have a studio or 
have a time. Yeah. It's mine. Very cool. Well, I know your husband, and I know he's very supportive, so I'm right there with you on that. Um, what, now, I know you're currently involved with a new project, and uh, this is one of the big reasons why I wanted to interview you this month. So go ahead and tell National Art Makers uh, what that project is and, and what it's all about. Um, well, like I said, Chuck is a, a writer, and he does a local blog called Nashville's Heart, with the emphasis on the art part of art. Okay. Um, and where he does weekly updates about events in Nashville and some of the artists that are showing around town. And I had approached Channel 9, Music City Arts, Channel 9 on K Comcast Cable, about how to do a slideshow of my artwork to just kind of promote my work. And when she got wind of the fact that Chuck had this blog, she thought it would be a great idea to have a show that was an extension of his blog that it sat down and did artist interviews and in, kind of in the studio, um, hands-on about their process. So that took place, that launched in March, and right now um, my work is at Channel 9, so you can go to their website and look it up, and okay. along with Doobie, which you're going to do an interview with yep. as well, and the wonderful Miranda Crump. Which um, we'll do one for her too. Yes, <laughs> and sh you can check out our interviews um, on through the middle of July, Sunday evenings at 6.30, Wednesday evenings at 5.30, and hopefully check out our artwork as well awesome. in the meantime. That sounds great. It's a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, so. uh, everybody, make sure you check that out. Yeah, and after that, there'll be, after our show comes down, our interviews come down, there'll be gallery interviews. We'll be talking about the process of owning a gallery, running a gallery, and how that kind of parallels being an artist, there's a similar passion there, there's a similar sacrifice and a drive, all for the love of art. Now you personally have some experience with the whole gallery uh, mm -hmm. owning or pursuing that side of it. Can you tell us a little more about your experience in that? Yes, um, same designer of this top, Rhiannon Rian Guillet, she and I ran a gallery called Magpie um, over off the 12 South area for uh, almost two years and loved every minute of it. Um, it did get very exhausting because we had so many other projects going on as well. But I'm very proud of what we did. Uh, we offered an outlet for artists, musicians, and local designers. Very cool. And hopefully one day we'll, we'll revisit. I think, I think you'll definitely revisit it one day. If I could help, I would, because it was a really, really cool idea. And it was really great. Um, what would you say are your, the rest, um, the rest of your goals for this year? Um, for this year, we're going to work on the TV show. Um, I am going to work on some of my own work. I've got a com more commission pieces is what I'm doing. Um, I'm not going to push myself. I want to do good quality work Yeah. and just take it one step at a time. Awesome. Yeah. Now, shooting forward, mm -hmm. what are your goals for five years from now? Five years from now. Yeah. That's too broad at this point. This, <laughs> no, I say that because I, I... It could be anything. Well, though, that's a question I love asking my interns because I, I thought I had big ideas when I was in my early 20s and yeah. my none of them panned out. Uh -huh. And actually, it panned out way better than I could have expected. Yeah. And so... I'm looking forward to that. I know. To the it, I know unexpected. It, well, it'll be a fun ride. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. As far as that goes. Well, Emily, I want to thank you uh, for sitting down with us here, uh, with me, and with National Art Makers, and taking the time to tell us about your artwork. Um, I hope everybody gets a chance to uh, check out Emily's artwork. Um, actually, before we do say goodbye, go ahead and just tell everybody where we can find you. All you know, look websites, anything where people can find more about you okay um my personal website www i don't even know why i say that <laughs> world wide web <laughs> efharper.com or nashvillesheart.com and that's it awesome well thank you everyone uh we're at the wonderful east uh, eastland cafe and uh, we're very thankful for them for giving us an opportunity to use this yeah. space to film um also want to thank emily again and we'll go ahead and thank chuck because that's her husband and he team. puts up with me. <laughs> he puts up with us. <laughs> um, yeah, keep checking us out, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks. Bye.
Strains and light will come again. 